Hello and welcome everyone to VMware Networking Basic Tutorial. You are watching the sixth module and second session. In this session, we're going to discuss about port binding in VMware Distributed Switch. In the last session, we have learned how to create distributed switch and how to create distributed port group, how to connect it to VM. But when we create distributed switch and port group, you see a lot of settings, but we haven't go through it. We just created with the default settings. So in this session, we're going to see how to configure those settings. So for example, when you create a new distributed group, after you name the distributed uh, group, then you see there is port binding, port allocation, number of ports and different VLAN type, including private VLAN. And also when you click for the advanced settings, you see there is a security tab is there. Traffic shaping is the teaming and failover is there, monitoring is there. But you see some of this we were discussed actually in the vSphere uh, standard. So anyway, I will explain to you this part also in this session. So let's start from the port binding, port allocation uh, settings. Then we will go through one by one. So port binding, this is a way you say or configure your virtual machines and virtual network adapters like how you want to connect it to a distributed switch. There are three different type of port binding available, but in the slide you see only two that is static binding and ephemeral binding. Other than this, there was dynamic binding, which is no more available with the recent latest version. So I just skipped it from here. In the static binding, when you connect a virtual machine to a port group configured uh, with a static binding a port gonna immediately assign and reserve for it so it guarantee the connectivity at all the time and the port is gonna disconnect only when the virtual machine is removed from that port group static binding is a default settings and that is mostly recommended for general use you can connect a virtual machine to a static binding port group only through vCenter server that is the difference when it comes to ephemeral binding in ephemeral binding, when you configure a port group with ephemeral binding, a port is created and assigned to virtual machine by the host. So in the static binding, it is by the vCenter. Here it is by the host. And it happens only when the virtual machine is powered on and its network interface card is in a connected state. And when the virtual machine powers off or the NIC of the virtual machine is disconnected, the port gonna delete so there is no guarantee of uh, or there is no assigned port which guarantee connectivity all the time so you can assign a virtual machine to a distributed port group with uh, ephemeral port binding uh, on exsi and vcenter so this giving you the flexibility to manage virtual machines connection even when the vcenter is down through host but the important thing that you want to understand is ephemeral port groups must be used only for recovery purpose when you want to provision the ports directly on host by passing vCenter server, not for any other case. So you have to go through static binding unless you have a situation to recover your virtual machines uh, while vCenter is down. So in the static port binding, we have a fixed port and elastic port. So when you go with a fixed port, it means you can specify the number of ports that you're going to use or that you want to use for that port group. Let's say you specify that three ports in the number of ports uh, you're going to use for the port group. So what will happen is that when you have uh, the fourth virtual machine, it need additional port more than three port is required, right? So when you start up or when you try to assign a new virtual machine to this port group, you will get an error that no free port is available. At the same time, if you go for elastic method, VDS distributed switch automatically increase the number of ports required. And also the port get reduced when you delete or remove the virtual machine from that port group. So I think that is the best option. Thank you for watching this video. In the next session, we're going to talk about private VLAN and the other VLAN options available in VMware distributed switch.